Hi, this is the sixth lecture in the pipe flow section of the class. It's the last lecture we'll do on pipe flow, and it's a rather long lecture, so I thought I would give an online version of it in addition to what we'll do in class. Now we're talking about pipe net networks, that is, multiple pipes that might be connected in various ways. One of the ways it might be connected, say we have three pipes, they might be connected in series. So the water would flow th first through pipe one, then pipe two, then pipe three. And in that circumstance, what we do know is that the flows are constant. That is, the flow through Q1 will also be the flow through Q2 will also be the flow through Q3. In addition, we also know that the head loss through the system, that is, from the start of pipe one to the end of pipe three, that head loss through the system will be the sum of the head loss that occurs in pipe one plus the head loss that occurs in pipe two plus the head loss that occurs in pipe three. Another way that we might combine those three pipes would be in some sort of branching pipe system where the water can either go through branch one or branch two or branch three. In that case, what we know is that the head losses will be the same through each of the three branches. The, the, the start of the pipe is at the upstream connection, and all the pipes are connected in the same downstream location. The pressure difference or the head loss that would occur through each of the branches will be the same. That is, the head loss that occurs through pipe one equals the head loss that occurs through pipe two equals the head loss that occurs through pipe three. And uh, in this case, what, it is, what is additive is the flow. The flow through the entire system will be the sum of the flow through pipe one plus pipe two plus pipe, pipe three. To sum up pipes in series, the flows are constant and the head losses are additive. Whereas in a branching system, flows are additive and the head losses are the same. Let's take that information and do an example. This is a branching pipe system that also has pipes in series. The water first goes through pipe one, then branches, and can either go through pipe two or pipe three, comes together, and then all goes through pipe four. And we're given some things, the things that aren't shown uh, circled are the things that we do know. We know the head loss through pipe one and pipe two and pipe four. We know the flow in pipe three and the flow in pipe four and we're asked to fill in those things that are inside the circles. The answers are, are already there. How did we get the 10? Well the 10 comes from the fact that this is the flow in pipe one. The flow in pipe one must also be it must be the same flow as the flow in pipe four. We're given Q4 equals 10, so then Q1 must also be 10. We don't know the flow in pipe two, but we do know that the flow through, the, the sum of the flow through branch two and branch three must equal 10. Since we're given Q3 as six, then flow two, Q2 must be four, so six plus four equals 10. That gives us all of the flows. How about the head loss? We're given the head loss in pipe one is 35, and we're given one of the head losses in the branch. Head loss in branch two is 20, so the head loss in branch three must also be 20. We're given the head loss branch three is 30, so that head loss through the entire system must be the head loss in one plus the head loss in either branch two or branch three. Don't double count these head losses in a branching part of the system. And then to that you add the head loss through pipe three, giving you a total head loss through the system of 85 feet. Next, let's work a problem that actually requires calculation of Q and or head loss through the Darcy equation. In this case, we're given the friction factors and the diameters and the lengths for all the pipes. We're given the flow for one of the branches. 
and we're asked to calculate the flow in the other branch and in pipe C, calculate all the head losses and the head loss through the system. I've got this page that I can leave up as I go on so we can go back and refer to it. In this case, it's convenient to get the head loss as a function of the flow rate. We know that our head loss using Darcy equation is FL over D times the velocity head. We can specify the velocity head V squared over 2G using instead the, the flow that is uh, V equals Q over A. So V equals 4Q over pi D squared. We substitute that in to get that V squared over 2G is 8Q squared over pi squared d to the fourth g. This only works for a circular pipe. If we combine those two equations, that is the equation for the velocity head and the Darcy-Weisbach equation, we get this version of the Darcy-Weisbach equation with the head loss given as a function of this information on the that comes from a specification of the system, the friction factors, the length, the diameters, and additional information on the flow. We can then write that the head loss is some function of the Q squared, or we can write that Q is some function of the head loss and the system information. What you'll see is that head loss equation is given as in the form of head loss equals some sort of constant times Q squared, where that constant A is 8FL over pi squared D to the fifth G. If we rearrange the equation for Q as we've done up here, you can see that Q is a different constant times the head loss to the one half power. That is that square root of the head loss. You'll see that the, the constant B is simply one over A and then find the square root of that. We'll use that equation to, to calculate head losses if we're given a Q or a Q if we're given a head loss. All right, so going back to our problem, we're going to take a look at first the solution method and then do the calculations. So let's go to that system and say what are the steps we would, we would need to take to solve this system? How can we get in a, a systematic way the things we're looking for as a function of what we're given? If we look at this, what we'll see is that we're given all the information that we need, the F, the D, the L, the Q, to find the head loss in pipe A. So we could use that equation that we'd previously given to calculate the head loss in A. Once we know that head loss, in one of the branches, we can use the fact that head loss in branch B is the same thing as the head loss in branch A. That means we'll have both of these head losses. And now that we've got the head loss, the L, the D, and the F, we can then calculate the flow in branch B. Once we know the flow in branch B, we know that the flow in pipe C is that in pipe A plus pipe B. That will give us all the flows. And then knowing the flow in pipe C, we can find the head loss in pipe C. Once we know that, we will have all of the head losses, and we can get the head loss through the entire system that is either at the start of the branch to the end of pipe C. That head loss from 1 to 2 is the head loss for either A or B plus the head loss through C. Those six steps for the six things that we are looking to solve for is shown here. Find the head loss in A, then find the head loss in B, find the Q for B, find the Q for C, find the head loss for C, then find the head loss for the total system. And I'll just remind you that when we're calculating that head loss for the entire system. We don't want to double count the head losses in the multiple branches. You only count it once. So the head loss for the entire system is the head loss for A or the head loss for B 
plus the head loss for C. And for this particular system, given the F, the L, and the D, we can calculate the constants in those equations relating flow to head loss or relating head loss to flow. That constant A for pipe A is this, for pipe B is that, for pipe C is that. Taking the reciprocals of those and taking the square root, we get these values for the constant B. Here again is the equation for that constant A. And here again are the equations we're going to use that head loss is A times Q squared. Q is B times head loss to the half. And going through the six steps, given the constant times the flow that we know for pipe A, we get the head loss in A is this value. Then we know that the head loss in B is equal to the head loss in A. Calculate that. Now that we know that the head loss is this, we can use the other equation that flow for B is the constant, 0 0.457 times the head loss to the half. That gives us the flow for branch B. Now that we know the flow for each of the branches, we can add them up and get the flow for pipe C. Once we know the flow for pipe C, we can use the equation above to say that the constant for the constant A for pipe C, 0 0.378 times that flow that we've calculated square gives squared gives a head loss for pipe C of this 17.61 feet. And now that we know all the head losses, we calculate the head loss for the system as one, don't double count, the head loss through one of the branches, 38.23 plus the head loss through pipe C is the total head loss. A different sort of problem that we commonly have is if we know the total flow, but we don't know how the flow is split between the branches. We know information on the branches, the F, the D, the L, but we don't know how the flow is split. How might we do that? And to solve a problem like that, I'll use our previous system, but say that we know that the total flow is 10 cubic feet per second, we'd like to know what is the flow between those two branching pipes, the flow in A and the flow in B, and we'd also like to know what is the head loss through the entire system. For those sorts of problems, this is the solution method. The first thing to do is to just guess at a head loss through the branch. And then once that head loss through the branch is guessed, we can use that to calculate the flows through each of the branches. And that will give us the at least the percentage flow in um, in each pipe within the the bra each branch. And then we can check to see whether the total flows are the flow that we're hoping to get. It, it, it won't be in general, so we'll have to scale up or scale down all of our flows to get the correct total flow. Once we have that correct total flow, then we can get the head losses with those updated flows, and then once we have those updated head losses, we can calculate the total head loss through the system. For our particular problem, Let's just say that we guess that the head loss through A, which is the head loss through B, is going to be larger than our uh, previous problem because now our total flow has increased. But we'll say our uh, head loss through A or B is 50 feet. And next, we then want to calculate the Q in branch A and the Q in branch, a, in branch B. Q in branch A using the constants that we had developed earlier and the head loss that we've guessed is 4.57 in branch A and the flow in branch B is 3.23. We add those up and the total flow for this particular 50 feet of head loss is 7.81. That's lower than the, the, the total flow of 10 that we were hoping to get. So we scale up by a factor 10 over 
the flow in each of the branches. The flow, this is the flow that we previously calculated in branch A. That's the flow that we previously calculated in branch B. We get new values for the flow in A and the flow in B. We add them up and now we do get 10.0 for our total flow. This, these numbers here are the, the increase needed on a fractional basis. And these numbers here are the previous values for our flows. Now we can get the, the head loss through A or B using our equation for head loss as a function of flow rate using the A constants from, from before and our new flows, we get that the head we can confirm that we get the same head loss, 81.99 feet through each of the branches. With that information, we can then calculate the head loss through the system. The head loss in one and two, from one to two is the head loss through A or the head loss through B plus the head loss through C. With a reminder, once again, not to double count the head losses. And so, um, whoops, I, in writing these notes, I realized that I have not calculated the head loss through C. We need to calculate the head loss through C as that flow squared times the A constant. Head loss through C is 37.76. Head loss through the system is therefore head loss through the branch plus the head loss from pipe C getting 119.75. And just as a final check, we can check to see that this fits with the previous value we got for head loss. What we can see from our equation is that the head loss is proportional to Q squared. So we would expect our new head loss through the system to be our old head loss through the system times the ratio of the new flow to the old flow squared, meaning the head loss from one to two in the new system should be the head loss from one to two in the old system times the new flow over the old flow squared, giving the head loss from one to two is 119.75. That's the same value that we had calculated previously. And if if for some reason you would want to calculate the head loss for other flows, what you can see here is that this information that we've calculated, the head loss for a particular flow rate can be used to get that constant for the system. We have 119.75 feet of head loss. When the flow is equal to 10, we use that to find that the A constant for the system is now 1.1975. And that's the end of this lecture.